I have to share this information with you because it's life changing, literally. Things like seed oils, avocado oil, almond milk, organic eggs, coffee, basic nutrition questions that I've been answering for years, so I just take for granted. Now there's more information coming in, like seed oils I just mentioned. The reason I want to do this podcast, and it's going to be a short one, and I might be all over the place, is because these are things that I just know at being a nutritionist for almost 30 years, practicing these strategies, knowing about food, how to look and feel amazing, how much to eat, what to eat, what to avoid. And I keep evolving too, because now all of a sudden I'm sensitive to seed oil. So let me just start with that real quick. And the reason this got, the reason I got inspired is I just got off a phone call with a nutrition coaching client that had he asked me the most amazing questions. He actually sent me an email with things he wanted to cover, and I loved it. It made me be more systematic too, and we covered so much in that session. Seed oils, canola, safflower, sunflower, corn oil, soybean oil. You're going to find them in bread, cookies, cakes, crapper, crackers, not crappers, crackers, and chips, potato chips, one of my favorite foods. So here's what happened. I'll give you a personal example. When I eat foods with seed oils, I get bloated. My body has trouble digesting them. I get irritable. So let's say on Sunday, it's my cheat day. I've been great all week. I've exercised and I'm going to have a bag of Cape Cod chips. Those are my absolute favorite. I know. So I do that Sunday. Let's say I'm on the beach with my girlfriend. I know Sunday night into Monday, and also into Tuesday, I'm going to be bloated. I'm going to feel fatter. I'm going to feel like I gained literally 10 pounds. Okay. Sorry to be crude, but I'm just going to be honest with you. I'm going to be less motivated. I'm going to wake up Monday morning. I'm usually motivated. I'm going to do my health letter. I'm going to send out a social media post. I'm going to create. I love to create stuff, right? I'm going to be sluggish. I'm not going to be motivated. I'm not going to want to do it. I keep telling people, my clients, my audiences, have a compelling vision, think about it all the time. I'm not going to be able to focus on my vision all because I ate seed oils. Now, if you can make a connection like this in your life to food specifically, you eat a certain food, you feel worse. You can't lose weight. You can't get focused. Your anxiety level might be higher. You might be bloated. You might be irritable. It might be hard for you to fall asleep. It might be hard for you to wake up in the morning. It might be hard for you to get to work. It might be hard for you to make that phone call. If any of this sounds familiar, I have to remind you, there's nothing, I have to remind you of this. There's nothing wrong with you. It might just be the food you're eating coupled with anxiety, coupled with the stress, the normal everyday stress that's going on in our lives that we just, you know, we can't avoid completely all the stress. That's why I get so excited about this. That's why I get a little bit crazy and I try to rein myself in because something as easy as avoiding seed oils will make you feel happier, healthier. You'll be able to lose weight. You'll be less bloated. You'll digest better. You'll go to the bathroom more regularly. You'll sleep better. You'll be a better parent. You'll be a better student. You'll be a better whatever better you want to be, better athlete. You will be better. Okay, so that's number one, seed oil. I'm just going to go down this list because I made a list for him. Just real quick, there's two products, two potato chip or chip companies. One is called Boulder and one is called Siete, S-I-T-E. Those are in a lot of the supermarkets around where I live. Check it out. If you can't find those, look, a lot of supermarkets now are carrying chips and snacks and, you know, bakery items, I guess, call them, with either olive oil or avocado oil. Those are the two oils that I see separated. Olive oil, definitely the healthiest oil on the planet. Healthiest fat on the planet. Grass-fed butter is a close second. Olive oil, healthiest fat on the planet. Eat Olive oil. I, I'm Greek, but even if I wasn't, that would be my primary source of fat to eat, salads, dressings, and to cook in. Don't worry about the burning point of olive oil. That's just, I don't believe that. In Greece, we've been frying foods in olive oil for years. And in some places of Greece, especially the islands and the remote places, people live to 100. They don't get cancer. They don't get diabetes. They don't get Alzheimer's. They don't get 
all of these Western diseases that a lot of us unfortunately get, heart disease, that are completely avoidable and, and reversible just by focusing on some of this food. Sugars. So my client asked me how to lose weight. I said, absolutely. You don't have to do anything. But if you want to lose weight, avoid bread. I know it's a heartbreaker. Believe me, I love bread. I make my own sourdough bread. But most of us are sensitive, especially when we get older, to gluten. It, we are, it's, we, it's called intolerance. We have trouble digesting gluten. A lot of it is because the, the wheat in the United States, at least, and now in other parts of the world, unfortunately, is hybridized. It's changed. It's not the wheat that our ancestors used to make sourdough bread from at home in the ovens or in the village ovens. It's a different product altogether. You and I cannot digest it. Same symptoms, bloating, foggy brain, irritable, not able to lose weight. Any, I mean, you, you can name any symptom of not feeling good and not looking good and tie it back into a food, unfortunately. And fortunately, because it's encouraging because you could just change the, what you're eating and avoid these foods. So bread and sugar. If you're, gonna give, if you're not going to give out, if, if you're not going to give up anything else and you want to lose weight, and look, being healthy is not about losing weight. That's a side effect of being healthy. But I'll, I'm going to be honest and I'm going to be direct. I know it's probably a goal because most people, when I ask, raise your hand if you want to lose weight, almost 90% of my audiences raise their hand. So I get it. So that's why I focus on weight loss. But if you want to lose weight, either eliminate or limit bread at least just once a day, no more. If you're eating bread more than once a day and you're not living in France or Greece, you're probably going to have a challenge losing weight. That's what I've observed. Sugars, processed sugars, sodas, sweets, same thing, bread. Most of the bread in the United States on the supermarket shelf has added sugar in it. Bread should not have sugar. Bread should have wheat, water, salt, basically. Those four things. And the, the, the starter comes from the wheat and feeding it uh, water and wheat and you get a starter. So it's really just three ingredients. If you're seeing any more ingredients, if you're seeing sugar, if you're seeing canola oil, if you're seeing some of these seed oils, avoid that bread like the plague because it's not going, you're not going to be able to digest it. It's going to affect you. And at the end of the week, here's what happens to my clients. They, they try, they do their best, they have good intentions, they're misguided by some of the media and some of the misinformation or some of just overwhelming information. At the end of the week, they can't lose weight, they don't feel or look any better for their efforts and they come to the conclusion that they're too lazy, their genetics aren't good enough, it's too hard, I'm not going to do it anymore and they give up. That's not fair to them. And it, it upsets me so much, especially when people that I care about are coming to that conclusion that, my God, you can overcome so many obstacles. You can go to school. You can figure out how to get a loan. You can get a job. You can be there for your family. You can survive trauma. You can survive terrible things that happen in the world, in, in politics, in the media. And you can't control what you're going to eat at your next meal. I just won't accept that because I, I know better and I know you're better. If you're challenged with this or someone you know is challenged with this, I know you're better than that. And so I encourage you to, if you don't look and feel the way you want and you're not able to stay motivated, look at some of the things we're talking about here, some of these foods. So sugars. And then diet sodas, I, is not it, just because I'm saying sugar, some people are like, well, how about diet pep, Dr. Pepper, diet Coke, diet, you know, once in a while. Do whatever you want. You're probably an adult. Do whatever you want. I have seen videos, maybe you've seen them too on social media, where someone pours a diet soda into a corroded car engine, and guess what? It eats away the rust. Do I have to say anything else? Do you think that's not going to have a negative effect on your insides, your digestive system, your organs? Okay, I won't say anything else about that. We talked about sugars. We talked about tracking. My clients, this is the other thing. I've been coaching people for almost 30 years. My clients who track every single thing they eat and drink for two weeks. That's my recommendation. This is what I did when I got my nutrition degree 25 years ago. 
they track every even longer than that 27 28 almost 30 years ago I'm, I'm getting older and i forget if they track every single thing they eat and drink for two weeks just two weeks it will change their lives first of all they'll always lose weight if they're honest they will always lose weight okay i saw i thought that we uh lost connection they will always lose weight why because now there's no lying and i, and I don't mean that in a judgmental way we underestimate if we don't write it down we underestimate how much we're eating and drinking so this is, these are studies that I read when I was studying nutrition, like I said. So once I learned this, I, I, if I want to lose weight, and I, I wanted to lose weight, I was 80 pounds, I was 60 pounds overweight at one point. I wrote down every single thing I ate and drank longer than two weeks. I did it for weeks, weeks, maybe months. And I was shocked that I was eating so much more than I thought in my mind. And when I wrote it down and when I started using these apps, which is so cool, a lot of them are free, like MyFitnessPal. Uh, Noom is like the number one rated app. I've never used it personally. I use my fitness pal and I recommend my fitness pal to my clients because it's free. I don't think you have to pay for it unless you want to pay for a service or, or a subscription. Okay, what else did we talk about? We talked about, uh, to start about eggs and coffee. So eggs, if you're going to eat eggs and you want to be healthy, I've been saying this for 20 years, choose organic. They cost more. But by law, in the United States, if something has an organic USDA label on it, it can't, by law, have herbicides, fungicides, pesticides, hormones, antibiotics. It cannot be genetically modified. It cannot have artificial flavorings, sweeteners, preservatives. All of that stuff that I know you know this is not good for you. It cannot, by law be in a product that's labeled organic so that just it's a no-brainer for me it just kind of takes the guesswork i'm going through the supermarket aisle i see something that's organic i'm just going to know it's not going to have their pro those ingredients or those additives or those harmful uh, components and then the next thing i'm going to do is look at the label and i'm going to look at if i'm buying orange juice i want the first ingredient to be what oranges I don't want it to be citric acid or anything else that you can possibly think of in orange juice. I want the first ingredient to be the food that I'm buying. That's just common sense for me. And maybe that's uh, something that you've been doing for years. We talked about potatoes. Are potatoes healthy? I love this one because I'm a lot. Well, I'm going to go back to coffee too. I got to do that. Um, but I, let me talk about potatoes. Potatoes are healthy. The healthiest people in the world, Greece specifically, have been eating potatoes for a very, very long time. And they eat them often, and they are healthy. Again, it's how we're making the potatoes. Greeks, we roast them with lots of fresh lemon juice, salt, and oregano. You can bake them and add grass-fed butter. You could pour, drizzle them with olive oil. You can put some organic sour cream a little bit. Now, listen to all those ingredients. I'm talking about whole ingredients added to potatoes, cooked. The potatoes are cooked in a healthier way. Not that frying is bad. Once in a while, if you're eating fried foods, that's okay. Just don't make it a regular habit. If you want to look and feel amazing, if you don't care, then you, this podcast is really moot, moot for you anyway. So potatoes are healthy. Coffee. Is coffee healthy? Is coffee unhealthy? There's two things, there's three things that the healthiest people in the world eat as staples. Number one is oatmeal, plain, some type of oatmeal or porridge. They're eating consistently, but plain, they're adding their own honey, cinnamon, fresh fruit, okay? Coffee, they're drinking some type of coffee, but drink it black. Make it organic. There's even mold now that's found in a lot of coffee. I was buying mold-free coffee for a while. It's very expensive. And now I, I make sure at least I'm buying organic coffee and I've trained my palate to drink it black because I actually like the taste of coffee. When you drink coffee black, you taste those nuances. You taste, you know, if you go to a wine tasting and they're, they're saying, are you tasting pear? Are you tasting whatever it is? you can experience the same thing with coffee. When I drink coffee, really good quality organic coffee, you could find it at most supermarkets now. 
I don't add anything to it. You don't have to do that, but it's just something that I've done. I can taste notes of chocolate. I can taste notes of currants. I can taste different things because the food is more pure, the coffee is more pure, and my palate is more sensitive because 80% of the time I don't eat foods that are going to mute my palate, that are going to cause inflammation, that are going to cause me to lose some of my senses and some of my you know, taste sensations. I want food to taste good if I avoid the foods, some of the foods that I talk about, then my taste buds come alive and the food that I'm eating tastes better and studies show, and this is common sense, that I will eat less if the food tastes better because I will be more satisfied and I won't just keep stuffing my face just to try to get some type of a sensation or a taste out of the food, right? That made sense to me too when I found that food science. Quinoa is a great grain. I told you try to limit bread, try to limit... Um, most sugars, right, in the form of bread or rice, unfortunately, I know rice is a staple around the world, but it's just it, white rice is not as healthy as brown rice, but brown rice has been contaminated with arsenic. So there's a whole, that whole thing too. Arsenic is another inflammatory or it causes inflammation in the body. So quinoa seems to be a healthier choice. Quinoa is a complete protein by itself. So if you do want to limit your meat for whatever reason, and there's really no research that shows that you have to if you're eating grass-fed organic. Let me, I'll talk about that in a second too. There's no research that says you should be not eating meat unless you choose to. If you want great protein, eat more beans. Rice and beans is a complete protein, but again, be careful of your rice intake. And quinoa, like I said, is a complete protein, and you could flavor profile it like you do your rice, like you do your farro wheat, let's say. Um, quinoa will take on a lot of the tastes that you're putting into it. It has its own taste too, but play around with it. See what you think. Let me talk about meat. If you're going to eat meat, and again, there's no research that shows you don't, you have to be vegan or vegetarian unless you choose to be. That's your choice. But don't do it because you think you're going to be healthier because there's no research that shows that. In fact, the people that live the longest, happiest, healthiest lives eat meat. They just do so in small quantities and they eat good quality meat. A lot of the times they are raising the chickens or they're tending the goats or the sheep or they're, they have a cow in the backyard that they're getting milk from and they're making Parmigiano Reggiano cheese from, right? They're just, they're just living, they're, they're growing the animals. The animals are living in healthier places that are less polluted. They're eating foods that they're naturally supposed to eat. Cows are supposed to eat grass. They're not supposed to eat corn and soybeans, which is what we feed them in this country. The cows get sick. They create inflammation. They're given hormones and antibiotics because the cows are sick. They're also giving hormones and antibi antibiotics, the hormones obviously, but the antibiotics for some reason make the cows grow bigger and fatter. And that means when they sell them, they make more money because there's more meat to sell, right? But you and I don't want to be caught up in that cycle. I'm just being direct with you. Um, cold cuts. My client also asked me about cold cuts. I'm so happy. I eat cold cuts every week. I eat meat every single day too. I just eat organic, uh, chicken, turkey, or pork. I eat wild fish. And I eat grass-fed beef and lamb. So I'm eating meat that at least has not been fed hormones, antibiotics. It's hopefully eating what it's naturally supposed to be eating and raised in a sustainable way as much as possible and humanely. I care about the animals too. I'm just eating the cycle of life. If you look at the cycle of life, I have a master's of science degree. I studied biology. I learned biology in my undergraduate degree. I learned it in high school. You probably learned this too. There's a natural cycle of life. And humans and animals and plants are part of that natural cycle. As close as we can get to that natural cycle, we will be healthier. All of the research shows that, and it's also a little bit of common sense. Okay? So cold cuts, are they healthy? Are they not? If you're eating cold cuts that have nitrates in them, nitrates are preservatives, we know, we know this. And I've known this for over 20 years. Nitrates are cause cancer in laboratory animals. So I'm not going to eat nitrates. I'm not going to feed nitrates to my children. That just makes sense to me. The 
Cold cuts that I buy for myself and for my family are nitrate free, but they're also from animals that are either organic or have not been fed hormones or antibiotics and have not been fed genetically modified organisms. That all, like I said, causes inflammation in the animal. So let's just say you're buying, you want to be healthier, you want to buy healthier salami, you're buying a nitrate free salami, just go to the extra step. step look on the package and see if it's hormone, antibiotic, non-GMO. If it's organic, it's not gonna have any of that stuff. It's not gonna have the nitrates in it too. So that again, it's just a super simple way. You pick up a package of salami or cheese and it's organic, you don't have to worry about any of that other stuff. Dairy too, there's a link, the China study, uh, it's been out for many, 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 many years. There's a direct link with conventional dairy, that's dairy, that's cows that have been fed that have been given hormones and antibiotics, have fed genetically modified organisms, soybeans, corn, things that they're not supposed to be eating. They have inflammation. When you and I drink those milk products or eat those cheese products or eat those yogurt products, we get sick. We get inflammation in our body that comes from the animal's milk. It comes from the animal and then that gets transferred to the milk. If you want to eat dairy, I would do so in small quantities and I would eat dairy that's organic that's been fermented. This is the good news. Again, there is good news. That fermented is in the form of, let's say, Parmigiano-Reggiano cheese or feta cheese. Parmigiano-Reggiano cheese is fermented. It's fermented cow's milk from healthier cows, hopefully, get a good source, right? That's going to have an actual health benefit to you. Feta, traditionally, from Greece, now, I wouldn't buy cow's milk feta. If you're buying feta for health benefits, I wouldn't buy cow's milk. You're not going to get the health benefit. Traditionally, feta is made with sheep and or goat's milk. It could be a blend of the two or just one or the other. Those animals are going to be healthier generally. These are smaller. They're producing, these people, these farmers are smaller. They're producing less. So they're more able to control what they're feeding their animals. And the fermentation of the feta makes it healthier. There's also research that shows that goat and sheep might not be as, or might be more tolerable to us. A lot of us have lactose intolerance, which is an inability or a decreased ability to digest lactose, which is the sugar that's found in milk, dairy product. So some people are able to eat goat and sheep's milk product because it's less of an irritant. That's more good news too for you cheese lovers out there. And then what else did we talk about? We talked about making a smoothie. I think a smoothie is a great idea. I love uh, Greek organic plain yogurt. Do not buy yogurt. That's if you're trying to be healthy, that is. Do not buy yogurt that's flavored because it's going to have added sugar. You might as well drink a Coke or a Pepsi. It's going to have added sugar in it. So if you're doing it to be healthy, buy plain Greek yogurt. I love Greek yogurt because it's the thickest, healthiest. Make sure it's organic because organic is not linked to causing cancer. That's the China study. And I add to my smoothies when I make them um, either fresh fruit or organic fruit. I love organic blueberries, strawberries. I have organic bananas. And so that, that sweetens the smoothie without adding extra sugar. And then I add a little bit of cinnamon because cinnamon is anti-inflammatory. And cinnamon also gives it another sense of sweetness, even though it's not lending any calories. When something has cinnamon in it, it just tastes, to me, to, at least to my taste buds, a little bit sweeter. And then honey. Local honey has health benefits. Um, it could help. There's research that shows it could help with seasonal aller allergies because, again, it's the part of the cycle of life. If it's local, event, uh, especially, I do love to buy Greek Honey, I'm just partial to that too. I like the flavor and I think there's a health benefit there too. Okay, water. How much water to drink? Half our body weight in ounces. That's what the research has been forever. That's a lot of water. You're going to be going to the bathroom all the time, but that's good. It gets you up and out of your chair. It gets your system flush. So it's, it's a good uh, hassle to put up with. And seltzer. Is seltzer... Healthy or not, I've done the research myself because I love drinking seltzer. I drink it a couple of times a week, sometimes plain, sometimes flavored. I haven't found any research that shows that seltzer is unhealthy. So that's the good news too. Let me just do a quick scan here to see if I missed anything. 
So that's all nutrition. Obviously, here's the three secrets of success just to give you this too. Motivation, vision, vision, vision. What do you want? Why are you going to go out of your way to choose these foods? They cost a little bit more. They might be a little bit harder to get. Um, They might take a little more prep time. Why are you going to go through the bother? Vision. I want to look and feel amazing. I want to be strong. I want to live a long time. I want to support my family. I want to be there for them. I want to be a, a rock for them. Whatever it is that works for you, those are the some of the things that work for me and why I choose to go out of my way to prepare and serve these foods to the people that I love. So vision, nutrition we talked about, and then exercise. Train your body. And while you're training your body, you're going to build muscle. Make sure you build muscle. Don't just do cardio unless you love cardio. Build muscle. Do it in a circuit. Watch my other videos, anything I have on exercise. I have my workout that I've been doing for at least 25 years all over my social media. Check that out. It's an amazing whole body 20-minute workout. It's so easy, so effective. It's kept me fit for 25 years. So, so vision, know what you want, and then tie how you're going to eat like this and how you're going to train your body to, to nurture and make that vision come true to acquire what it is you want in life. That for me has made so much sense for over 30 years that that I've been on my journey and I still have fun doing it. If you see my social media, I'm out, I'm cooking, I'm eating out, I'm enjoying alcoholic beverages in moderation, I'm eating fried chicken, I'm eating ribs and wings. and I don't deprive myself, I just have a balance. 80-20 80-20 rule. 80% of the time I think about my vision, I nail it with my food, and I train my body. And 20% I do whatever I want. That's a psychological tool too that empowers us, reminds us that we're in control, and we don't have to be perfect. Hope that helps. If I can help you or your family, if I can speak to inspire your school or your company or your group, please reach out to me. I'm Peter. Until next time.